immediately introduce myself. My name is John Ramos from the Nerdy Basement. Thank you for taking your time, Elena, um, to be with us today and talk about wife like. So, how have you been and how has your day been today? Oh, excellent. Now that I meet you, John, are, where are you from, by the way? Is I'm Ramos from Spanish. Yes, that's Spanish. I'm from Puerto Rico. Hablas Español. Yes, see. Como la flor con tanto amor me diste tú, se marechito. I love, oh my gosh. You love Selena? Latina. Oh my God, I love it. Uh, did you see the Spanish awesome. I was singing in the movie? With yes. The language? What did you think? I loved it. I loved it. Yeah? I loved it. We that wanted I... to do some. Oh, okay. See, I, I actually did enjoy the whole film. I was like, I, I'm a very big fan of like, this type of like dystopian future-like um sci-fi film so i completely enjoyed wife like and your performance was amazing i gotta say oh well muchas gracias thank you so much you know I, i'm glad that you enjoyed it you know we shot that movie in 17 days in the oh, rain wow. of beautiful vancouver um and so to be able to share it now and i'm glad that you could hear the the singing aspect because as you can see there's a lot of nuance in this film um and in the lyrics that i was singing in the spanish mm -hmm. you'll see it's talking about the rain and water and with the other languages we're talking about dolls we're talking about sand there's a and it's all kind of it's very poetic the meaning james bird our director wrote the the lines um but Stephen paul our producer along with james we all came up with this idea to find ways to really lean into the ai aspect the settings aspect of our mm -hmm. phones and how that would manifest in an AI flesh robot. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we're finally getting to, to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so my my first question um, for me, uh, for you to today is what drew you to be part of this project? Well, I mean, I upon first reading the script, John, mm -hmm. it, it was it fascinated me because it was a very visceral world I could picture this like you're saying dystopian futuristic world it was very distinct it stood out on its own and I thought wow this role the journey that this character goes on is going to be a challenge and I love a challenge um the first thing that happened in my mind is the fact that there's themes in here of, of what's happening right now in our society and stuff that's been yes. happening since the beginning of time and the treatment of women the role in in, in the society and also it, it brought me back to mythology. I love, I'm a very passionate about mythology and, and the story of Pandora, okay. uh, which I keep referencing. Um, and to me, she's the example of the ancient robot and how, you know, she was given all of these gifts by the gods. She was made of clay and earth and water and breathed in by the winds. And the gods gave her different abilities, gifts and talents and beauty and, and all of these different abilities. But the most dangerous thing that they gave her was curiosity. And that was from Hera, Zeus's wife. Um, and how that it's dangerous to give women curiosity and how it's and how that caused all the problems for men and brought all the turmoil and strife um, and, and, and how it plays into this story with this robot given all of these abilities and how she has curiosity and how that becomes a danger, but also the over, overarching thing about how human beings, human versus AI, Human beings, we are lonely and we seek comfort, we seek intimacy, we seek being understood. That's a universal thing and that never changes. And But to see how in this story that kind of opens up a whole, yeah. we, we kind of go into the rabbit hole, right? And, and how when we get, we lean too much into technology, how that can sometimes strip, of, strip us of our humanity, especially in William's case, um, where the AI, the, the technology is becoming more human-like than, than we are. That and is true. So I think... It was just very deep themes happening, so many layers to feel that excited me. Oh, that's amazing. I, I got to say that one of the things that I actually um, was very impressed is how you portrayed being the AI, you know, being that that artificial intelligence. That's something that's pretty, pretty um, not easy to to do uh, because there's a lot of um, other films that try to do it, but they don't do it uh the best way possible, but I actually loved how how it worked out with you and how you brought Meredith um, to life. So my next question would be uh, your experience on set. How was it? You know, you to you just told me that it was 17 days to film the, the wife like so it, it had to be pretty, pretty like, you know, fast paced. 
it was intense. We did so many scenes in one day, but I love it because it, like, you couldn't overthink anything. You just, I did the preparation before and then we were in it with the team. And luckily I had the support of, um, of James Byrne, our director, Stephen Paul, mm -hmm. our producer, both super creative. You know, Stephen was a massive help because he's very conscious of all the details, like from the, the tiniest nuances. And he'd help me out, make sure that I felt supported. It was like a family environment that he put together. He, he gathered such a lovely crew um, that worked really quickly. And was it was just it was a really nice team to have. If you're going to do it in 17 days, it was it was it really worked, and it also made me feel safe to be vulnerable and to and all, all the different scenes and the subject matter that we're tackling, and that's so important. Um, I'm very grateful to Stephen for, for putting those pieces together. Um, just to answer your question on set, yeah, I mean. The preparation was beforehand in all of the discussions, and then on the day we dive in and, and, and help out one another. A lot of it was physicality. I um, I'm a, I love going to the gym, so to be able to, okay. I, I really had to make sure I was in tip top shape for this role. Um, because she's AI, and then yes. <laughs> bringing out what's the rhythm of her movement. You know, she's there's a certain uh, cadence to to the way she speaks. Um much like you hear when you hear, talk to Siri or Alexa, but for her, there's more than just the mechanics. There's gonna be some more nuance you wanna layer in the more smarter or more evolved she gets um, as technology, but also the, okay, what kind of animal would she be similar to in, in grace and, and, and movement like a gazelle or, or bird or like a bird because she's kind of like a caged bird. And, and the clothing that I'm wearing was all very intentional. It was, very, it was a lot of tight clothes, 50s housewives kind of stuff, much yeah. as, Another comment on 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 how much has changed as we go through history. You know, you've got the 600 BC, you've got the Pandora's myth, you've got the French Revolution with the corsets, and where you were literally the you can't even get your breath out, you can't even get your voice out, and then you've got the 50s housewives. So all of this was very helpful in informing the character, and there was no CGI used, I will say, on anything physically. Okay, because we were playing, <laughs> making sure also with posture. The neck when someone was making a comment on the neck that my I was like trying to flex my neck muscles so they appear like wiring. We wanted okay. to add in whatever things we couldn't use. Um, so 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 nothing on my body was fake. I was all hard work and <laughs> and, 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 and training um, from every movement that I made to even mm -hmm. sitting down yeah. to yeah everything everything. <laughs> wow, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. So uh, one of the things that uh, letting go going back to the same thing that seventeen days to to make this film and um, how did you get to prepare yourself for this role in that such small window. I know I joined a quite close to shooting. So, I mean, I just was thrust right in. I was having calls with um, Val, our, our wardrobe lady, um, lovely head of department, and then uh, James, Steve, and we were having Zooms. And then we just went right into it. Like, I, it was all very quick. I'm glad that we had, again, our, our creative team supporting me, Jonathan Rhys Myers, who is such a dream to have as a scene partner. You know, he, he has a lovely sense of humor. He's absolutely hilarious. We're shooting these heavy scenes. We're also doing intimate scenes. He was very respectful, made sure I felt safe and protected and supported. So I couldn't have asked for any better. He was lovely to have by my side as William. Um, so yeah, it was, it helped in this undertaking to have those elements. It made it a lot okay. easier and, and it made it fun. I was excited every day for what we were going to do. <laughs> we, we, it was like a marathon. It was really quick. So, um, so the, the film focuses very heavily on artificial intelligence, something deeply rooted in your character, Meredith. So how, how much would you, uh, would you say that is very lean on to your character, knowing that you're fully AI in the film? So knowing that I'm fully AI, yeah. How, how did it inform playing? You know, like, uh, yeah, on you as a as an actress, because you know you have to act a certain way. How do you brought more to to Meredith's character? Well, I I think John, it, it kind of is like she starts out at it at one point, right, where she's like a fresh factory, like the fresh out of the factory, and then it's gonna change the way that she perceives the world around her, the way she processes information. I like to view it as like, okay, how does her computer brain work? And then how does mm -hmm. her reaching singularity you know, mind work in the sense of like, okay, she has settings, she has a way she receives information, the way she studies people because AI is constantly observing and studying and getting more intelligent. Um, she's 
inching up. This is a thing we developed in percentages as far as how much human like she is getting yeah. um, and, and then getting reset depending. So she has a really strong and, and, and vivid arc, uh, which was fun to get to dive into and, and wanted to make sure in each scene, okay, that was, okay, what percentage am I at on, on this day? Um, am I, okay, how close am I to finding an identity? Um, you know, and that's played within the language when she starts to stop saying, Meredith would like to do this or I would like to do this. There's this constant power play between um, the roles in the house and there's a, a power play going on between ownership and identity, her own, you know, yeah. what, what you call it a saw, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. So we, we played with that. And, and again, it was all through the little mannerisms too, like blinking when I was, <laughs> that, I've never with any character to think about blinking so much or, or little mannerisms that we do that we're not even aware of talking mm -hmm. with my hands I had to be very control, control that, uh, not swallow in any takes because it would, it would ruin the wiring. It would look too human. Um, my blinks had to be very intentional so all of these things my, my neck and my posture and make sure that it was always never slouching I'd go and watch a take oh no let it relax for one second I had to redo it because you know it's got to be consistency is key with machinery it's consistency it's rhythm so these were really fun things to explore and be mindful of and can't let it slip oh yeah that's why that's why um that's why I mentioned before that it's it's pretty pretty difficult to bring like um a robot as aspect to to you know to a character as an actor or an actress so i i, I gotta say kudos to your performance i i actually loved it i was like wow i uh, mesmerizing on how you made meredith come to and wife like so oh, thank you <laughs> so my next question would be um how does your role of meredith compare to your other roles you've portrayed like let's say for an example uh one of your I, I would not i would say most recent projects that was being playing chloe uh in jupiter's legacy yeah oh my gosh vastly different you know because this is this is a character chloe's like so human and, and in the aspect of that show she's too human for all the superhumans like she's too flawed she's like too it, it's it, you know but it's real and and, and that's yeah. important to see so she's a mess she's all over the place with this character she's um completely composed and, and, and a machine. And this was something I had never done before, dip my feet into. So it it was a fun challenge. Then you've got the aspect of playing the Meredith, the human, when we'd see the actual human yeah. uh, Meredith. So making sure that there was a, a contrast there so we could see the difference. Because even in those intimate scenes, which to me are pretty disturbing when he's setting our intimacy settings and, and in, you know, they're saying, I love you to one another. Uh, we wanted to make sure that you could feel the difference that, okay, even though they have these moments that can be very, you know, you, you feel there's a connection there. There's a love story there. At the end of the day, it's, it's still a machine. There's still a machine and it's not a human being so that when you you feel that emotional pull when you see Meredith and living her life um which is why I feel like this love story evolves into a love story between uh AI Meredith and the act the the the, the human Meredith the, and, the, yeah. and in a sense wanting to honor the the ghost of Meredith or avenge her maybe not that she's back from death but you bring her justice in some kind of capacity so it's it's an interesting kind of I don't know. There's a lot at play here. Okay. So uh, my final uh, question it would be, so the film ends very open-ended uh, with Meredith and um, our other character that we see that there is like a very uh, open ending to, to this story. So my question would be, is there any possibility that we're going to see a sequel because I know that in this film there's other topics that we that we talk inside of wife like so yes. is there any possibility to see a second one you see you've heard you've caught a lot there's a lot of little nuggets planted there's a lot of seeds planted um yeah. and Yes. So I would tell you that I think the possibilities are endless. If enough people watch the movie, John, if we get mm -hmm. enough people to go out and see it, support the film, spread the word, then I think there's no, nothing is impossible. I don't think anything can be crossed off. So we got it's a, it's an effort. We got to do it, John. We got to get people to see it. Yes. And because I do think there is so much more to explore in this world. And from just the creative minds of 
of uh, Stephen and James, like there's a lot of, of, of ideas. Um, and, and again, like stuff that you caught already that have been sewn into the story. So we gotta get it out there. Yeah, we, we have to get it out there. So um, Elena, I'm really, really proud and happy that I got to interview uh, you today. Uh, thanks um, to the Paramount team as well for giving us that chance here at the Nerdy Basement. The film will be available on August 12th in selected theaters and in um, video on demand. So. Hope everybody can enjoy uh, the film like I did, Wife Like. It's an amazing film. So thank you very much, Elena. Muchísimas gracias. Okay. Hasta la próxima, John. You are wonderful. I hope we get to meet in person one day. Gracias, gracias. <laughs> Bye. Bye.